Hello everybody. This video, which is going to be a two-parter, I apologize for that, but it was just it was just too much. Um, it's a it's a video of a very very nice fish, um, but in the beginning, oh boy, uh, absolute heart attack, absolute catastrophe. Uh, you'll have to watch it to see it. Uh, I had a meltdown for about two days before I could go back and and face it. Um, but it's a uh, this shows almost everything I did to this fish, the rock, uh, everything. So uh, enjoy the first half. I stop this this video, this first part stops where the I'm working on the tail, and the second part uh, will go from the tail to the very end. So hopefully you you will enjoy this video because I sure as heck had fun. You can see this crack right here goes all the way down. I can see it at least down to here. There's a crack going here, and then it goes sideways. This crack goes down at least to there. And this crack goes down, well, I don't know how far, at least to there. But you can see this major one, I don't know if you see that or not, goes here. And this one start. oh, that's that one, goes all the way through the fish. So, quite scary. So, and then the other side, let me show you this other side. Boy, that's a heavy rock. This crack goes here. This one comes out here. Goes down all the way through the rock. That's a scary one. This one comes down and goes sideways over to there. This one doesn't look too bad over here. That might be the, the end of that crack for depthness. I meant to do this like last couple of months the weather was really warm oh that's not soaking in at all a little bit not enough though not for my liking okay this is how they sent it Mosquito netting with some sort of glue. I'm going to take this, make a bunch of cuts, and I'm talking about a bunch. The heck's your one? Well, that's back breaking work. <clears throat> if you can see this, you can see that or not, right here, there's the cut. Leaves me almost an inch of rock. So, I gotta make about every three quarters of an inch. Two passes to make sure they're all the same depth. So, I'll get back to you. This is can't take me away. Try me. That was a lot of work. So the rock is uneven, so the cuts are uneven, but they're all basically the same depth. So, I've got this. And I've got two different chisels. Uh, plus, what you're wondering is why have I got two different directions here? It's because I started cutting this way, and I realized as I was in the middle of a cutting there, uh, why am I cutting with the cracks instead of against the cracks? So when I'm pounding this way, breaking this stuff off, hopefully I won't destroy it. Uh, fingers crossed on that one. But, uh... Oh, that broke off pretty easy. Let me show you how I do that. These ones I just... 
Wow, get a load of that. This might be easier than I think. Oh man, I hate hitting this though. Holy cow, get a load of that. Okay. It won't be even, but that's gonna take a lot of rock off. I just hope it doesn't break. <laughs> Jesus, scary, scary stuff. Caribe says. A lot wider. You can. Can you see this crack here? Stops right there somewhere, and then this one comes all the way over here and stops right there. This one, I think, might be a cut, but you can see. When you look at these things. This was the back, and then they cut off probably three inches of rock uh, you can see where their cuts were and they glued this thing on and then I took off this much more so now it's almost a manageable piece so now I'm going to take this thing create another dust storm flatten this whole thing up tomorrow I'll wash this whole rock I'm going to glue some uh, back back uh, backboard on it backing board whatever it's called and uh, then I can handle this without fear of it falling apart, hopefully, if I get that far. <laughs> okay. Got on my eye protectors. Dust mask. You can see all the mountains on here. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. Hopefully without destroying it. Here it goes. Whoop. Yep. It would help if I plugged it in. Jeez. I'll do that to the entire rock. Jesus Christ. My worst effing nightmare. God, I'm disappointed. Broke all the way through. Left us a couple days. I still haven't looked at it. Don't lose any pieces. Got to save that one. I'm going to finish taking this off. important pieces. I'm going to carry those into the other garage. Turn those around. Uh, and just see what how bad that is or how nice it is. 
Some brakes are better than others. So, let's go to the other garage. All right, I made it. I was extremely careful carrying this in because I didn't want to touch the, either one of these edges. Um, I've got to clean all of this edge and all of this edge down in here. It's just full of dust and dirt and stuff. Let that dry and set it down on the table and then dry fit it. And hopefully when I dry fit it, I hopefully I don't break anything. There's some really... Ugh, it's it's, it's going to be scary. No ifs, ands, or buts. Anyways, uh, to clean this, all I do is take water. Ooh, easy, Ron. Trying to be oh so careful of that edge up there. Oh, man, that's scary. Life and times of a fossil preparator. And the thing is, I kind of figured that was going to happen, but oh, I was so close. I thought I was going to make it with no breakage. So yeah, I was upset. I had a little bit of a meltdown. I apologize for that. I mean, come on. It's just a rock. Very cool rock, but it's just a rock. Okay. Jesus. There's a rock. Better save that. One side clean. Okay, that didn't take long. Half hour maybe. Luckily I got other things to work on, but here goes a dry fit right in front of your freaking eyeballs. Gotta hope I don't mess this up. So, one grain of sand will throw everything off. Something holding that. Wow, this is scary. I mean, that was pretty good, but and it's not clamped. I got my clamps here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and glue it. So. I can put that in afterwards, but I don't know if it'll fit if I can do it afterwards. So, what I'm going to do is put glue on this piece. put that into place right for now I think I'll cut this a bit bigger because I got a bunch of glue coming okay yeah here goes nothing I don't usually glue this close to the top but I want that to be oh this is scary I'll do three strips of glue here. And 
and then press those together oh god here goes nothing you put a little bit of glue on that edge mallet but I didn't talk about not thinking okay, I hope that goes together come on baby oh that's going together pretty good oh that's pretty good oh I'm liking that Whew, look at that. Oh, jeez. Forgot this piece. Oh, damn. Oh, <laughs> oh crap. I do with the glue. Oh, Jesus, Ronald. That wasn't good. You get a putty knife here. Use it as a... Mm, dang. Come on, man. Guys, but this is freaking nerve wracking for me. Then I paid a fortune for this. Oh, okay. That's got to sit for at least 24 hours. Oop, I got some glue coming out. But overall, that came out... That came out pretty good. That's going to be a very easy crack to repair. Very easy. I mean, still more work, but... Okay, on to the next project. At least for today. Okay, that's been curing for over 24 hours now. I'm drawing the last line of where I want to make my cuts. And then, oops. So that's where I'm going to cut it, make it a little bit more manageable anyways, but nice and square, uh, ready for a frame or whatever I want. I might put this in a frame just to help protect that thing from breaking in two again. Uh, so, outside and cutting. Alright, here goes nothing. This is just going to be deep enough with this uh, in the way to I think just get through with one cut. Lord, that's some hard rock. All right, three more sides to go. My oh, Lord, look at that, I can hardly see. Inside, get everything cleaned up. And 
there she is, all trimmed down, glued back together. This glue is going to bother me. Uh, but at the time, it certainly didn't. But I'd rather be safe than sorry. Anyways, uh, time to wash this thing. Jeez. Oh, Simply, uh, got a toothbrush, a bigger scrub brush with stiffer bristles, and some water. Might be a little dirty, but who cares? Just gonna wet this down. The edges aren't perfect. If I, if I put it in a frame, I won't worry about it. And if I'm going to hang on the wall as is, which I'd like to do, but then I'll clean up the edges. Oh, that's, that is dirty. I hope that black comes off of there. Oh, it is. Oh, geez, look at that. Oh boy, how nice is that? Oh geez, that's how I like that. Let me get rid of some of this black gunk. Oh, that's nice, that black coming off of there. I'm going to uh, dump my water in my rock bucket and get some clean water. Always have water out here, even in the winter time. But in the winter time, it, <laughs> it does get frozen. Okay, now then, take this thing. Oh boy, that is. Look at that. It's going to be some black specks, but it's going to be a lot better than it was. I'm trying not to hit the fish with this really stiff bristles. Bristles, I mean. Wow, uh, that's a shrimp. Just another black spot, but it's a shrimp. And then, hit the fish again gently as possible. Boy, even the fish is absolutely filthy. God, there's that white stuff again. I don't know why that white stuff grows or accumulates on these fish from Lebanon, but it sure does. I'm going to get some more clean water. I'm trying to do this fast so I don't waste the viewer's time. That's actually not too bad. Wow, look at that. Jesus, what a freaking beautiful fish. I've got to clean up all these edges, expose these fins. Uh, I found out these fins are, that's where they stop, and that's where these stop. So whether I add a little to that or not, I don't know. But, Let me see if I can get my pointer here. Here's the body of the fish right here. So, a little bit of rock to take off. But, that's it for today. That's looking beautiful. That's going to be a beautiful fish. oil for your air scribes. I just use a couple drops for each one. And 
you also want to keep your o-rings in good shape so I take this grease I've already got these taken apart here's the o-rings for this tool I'm going to put those on there while my fingers are a mess and this one Oh, it's still a mess. Wipe off the grease. I glued my fingers back again together. I mean, glued them together again. Glue all over my thumb and uh, glued these fingers together. Jeez. Don't know how many times I've done that. It wasn't too bad though. I was able to pry them apart without damaging skin. Put these babies back together and I'll plug them back in to my uh, all my quick releases. I'll tighten that up later. And these will be good to go again for a while. They say to oil every eight hours, but I'm not sure if that's necessary or not. Okay, if you look up yonder, you can see where my quick connects are. Right here, I got four of them, which I had six. And I'm about ready to start my next project. Okay, this is now ready for prep. Um, got my OptiVisor on, on so I can see. Or see closer, I got my glasses on so I can actually see. And now that I've taken a close look at this fish, it's, got, it's missing this fin down here. It's missing this fin down here. And now I see it's missing all this fin right here. Extremely disappointing. In fact, that even looks like it's been tooled almost. There's something, something weird going on there. Um, super disappointing because he told me it was perfect. He told me it was 100% complete, and it is not. So, uh, buyer beware. That's how that works. So, I'm going to have a little bit of repair here. Some repair down in here so far. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get this prepped out, and when it's all prepped out, then I'll do my repairs. Uh, then I'll do crack fix, crack work and everything. And it shouldn't be too bad. So, I'm thinking I'm going to start here, get this out, and then follow this body line right here. Get that down to the tail at least. And see how far I can get. It's either going to come off easy, or it's going to be sticky, or God, who knows. <laughs> fingers always crossed so let me get set up and I'll show you where I'm going to start okay if the rock comes off easy I'm going to use this tool from Paleo Tools and if it doesn't come off easy and I got to work at it I'm going to use this smaller much smaller tool that I call the whiner um, from Zoic uh, nice little tool this I like this um, Paleo Tools actually offered me a a tool to test out. I guess I should have taken them up on that compare the two. Maybe later. Anyways, uh, let me zoom in on this one spot I'm going to try and you'll see exactly what's going to happen just like I'm going to see. I'm going to work right here. Let me get some more light on the project. Oh, geez. Okay. Turn that down low. see that's coming off extremely nicely the um, where this bone here is 
bit gnarly. Um, I'm gonna have to use a toothbrush to clean that up. I don't know. Uh, he had a very fine pointed tip of something. So, since this is gonna be easy, I'm just gonna keep right on going. have a bit of cleanup here where it's white stuff so that's when I'll come back and use this tool to really do a cleanup job then if I need to do any toothbrush work then I'll do that or can find point work so well I didn't get very far but it's real flaky there about ready to lose some bone stuff so I'm gonna stop Put just a small, teeny tiny amount of glue there. And that should be all nice and cured dry by the time I get back to do that fine cleanup stuff. that's it for this bigger tool and this area here now that I'm looking at it I realize it's the same up here I think it's a soft spot I think I put my I think I put my what's it called one I think I screwed up I'm blaming them and I think I did that damage when I scrubbed this rock clean I think that was just so soft it came off oh jeez anyways Okay, I don't know if this is going to work or not because I got my OptiVisor number 10 on which means I got to be right on top of this work. Let me get some more light. And this is a, uh, what I call the whiner. This is why. So when I get this started and show you what I, how I clean this up a little bit, um, I'll edit that sound down a bit. And there's that line right there. Let me get this rock resituated and come back and I'll show you how I'm going to try two different things to clean clean that up and see if it okay. works. Okay. If you can see this discoloration, which is actually all over the fish, really. But this is a bad area. Uh, I'm just going to try a couple things and see what happens. If something happens and it cleans up a bit, that's great. Mm, excuse me. If it doesn't clean up, then that's the way it goes. I'm going to try an eraser. Regular pencil eraser. <laughs> Jeez, what did I do? <laughs> the eraser is sticking to the fish. I've never seen that before. Holy moly. I've got a little stiff brush here. Okay, it's either that or it's an old eraser. I need a stiffer brush. Don't like that one bit. Where's my, uh, there it is. Sharpened chainsaw file. It's an old 
chainsaw file that wore out for sharpening chains but it's really hard steel so if you sharpen it to a point it holds the point pretty good hmm that's not gonna do much it looks like oh there we go it's a matter of all right this whole thing is covered in a crust that's what that is it's not discoloration, that's a crust. The thing is, I don't know whether the bone is harder or the crust is harder. Uh, if the crust is harder than the bone, <laughs> you don't even attempt to uh, use your sandblaster. Uh, and mine doesn't work here in Montana when it gets cold because then it just condenses and cakes up the powder. So, what I'm going to do next is uh, this area right here. I'm going to put some glue here to hold that. That's really soft rock. I don't know why it's really soft there, but it is. Uh, just to, uh, I'll, I'll do that in front of your eyeballs here. A little glue. I use Glyptol. I've been using it for 33 years. Liked it ever since then. Never found a reason to stop using it. But you could use that Paraloid. 72 or whatever it's called this is a lacquer base they say it yellows I don't think so so all I'm doing is soaking oh boy that's really soaking up there all I'm doing is holding those fine bones into place so I can take that off without more coming off. I think I'm screwed up when I wash this fish thinking that was, oh well, jeez, it's always something. Boy, that area up there came out pretty good with just a sharpened point. Uh, where it changes color, it's just, ugh, it's absolutely concrete. And it just changes right here. So that's the best that I can get that. Anyways, now on to there. So. Hmm. Well, I'm worried about something here. Where these little bones here are coming up from the top of the body of the fish, um, they get really, really small and elevated, which is really hard to see. So I think I'm going to take a line of glue and glue all those in place so that when I do this side on those small, against those small bones, hopefully I won't lose them. So, glue time. I decided to very gently wash that area with a uh, toothbrush very gently. I'm going to let that dry, then I'll glue that strip. It'll be dry here pretty quick because I've got speed dry. What is speed dry, you ask? That is speed dry. Of course, it's still going to take five minutes, and you don't want to watch something dry for five minutes. It's like watching a pot of boiling, waiting for a pot of water to boil. Okay, that didn't take too long. Now for a little bit of glue, just a small line of glue, that's all I'm going to do. Trying to be careful and get those right onto the ends of those bones. 
I still may lose them, may lose some, may not lose any, but I'm going to try anyways to save each and every one of those little high points of those bones. It's all a process. But this is going to be a pretty fast prep, I think, because everything you've seen so far is, I don't know, what, two hours, maybe? All right, I'm going to let that cure for a little bit. All right, I hope you'll be able to see this. hope my big fat head's not in the way. That's coming off pretty nicely. This is getting very soft up in here. And this is getting real soft right here. So I may have to slow down and use this uh, very slowly. May not save much more bone, but even if it saves a little bit, that's, uh, that's the idea. Oh man, super slow, super tedious. I can't concentrate like I used to, so I won't be able to do that much longer. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna concentrate on this and get right down on top of this rock, so I can't show you that, but you can see how it's coming off, at least on these harder, these bigger bones. Um, once I get down to here, eh, I don't know. We'll see. That takes some concentrating. You can see if you look carefully, I've lost some bone, not much, but little specks of it here and there. But uh, that looks pretty cool. I gotta still do some cleanup and stuff, but uh, I'm liking that. Not liking this, but I'm liking that. Anyways, I'm gonna work on the body of this fish, could do some cleanup. That's the fin works too tough. I'm waiting for tomorrow or the next day whenever to do some more fin work so I'm going to clean up these areas like this area here this area here around the head I'm going to save the teeth for last those are the coolest let's see here I'll do some of this right in front of your eyeballs here why that's divoted Dip it in like that, I don't know, but comes off pretty easy though. That's always nice. Get a little harder over here.
so where the body's at, the bone's a lot harder, but boy, behind these fins, that can get really, really soft and tender. Scary stuff, those fins. I used to tell people, if you can prep out a fish fin, you can prep out almost anything. But really, just patience. This is one of the tools I used to prep all my fish with before I had any money. Still don't have a lot of money, but I got more money than I can <laughs> at least afford some air scribes. <laughs> so, let me start cleaning this up. I just hit some really hard rock right in here on this tail, which blunted my tip. So, what I used to do quite often, an awful lot, is a whetstone, a little bit of honing oil, and I'm actually turning that like that. Give it a quick sharpen, and it's ready to go again. Hard part is grinding it down to the point without breaking the tent, the tip with the grinder. It gets hot, so you don't want to, you don't want it to get red hot when you're making those. If you do make them, no, most people don't. Okay, this area here where you can see which is discolored is where the glue was at. Here's where I'm cleaning it up very hard. Uh, I knew it was going to be a pain in the you know what, but it really is a pain in the you know what. Uh, places where there's dust that the glue went on, it's easier uh, because you can cut through the glue onto the dust and cleans off the bone really good. But where the glue is on the bone and there is no dust, it's a bit tough. But basically it's just, this is all it is. And you can feel the glue compared to feeling the bone. Glue is very, I don't know, rubbery, soft, but kind of like. Or the bone is very hard, very brittle. Actually, not too brittle, thank goodness. And you just keep scrubbing until you get past the soft, rubbery stuff. And get to the... That sound right there. That's bone. Anyways, I'm going to do this whole entire spot. Um, then I'm going to get back to work on from here to there. There's more glue right here. So it's going to be another, another problem spot. And there's that line. Okay, there's some certain areas here I'm going to wash up. Careful of those teeth. Going to attack those teeth next. I see a piece of bone just went flying, pretty small, but 
are thinking, what is this guy doing washing his fish? Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm washing it. Do the speed dry, work on this mouth, save these fin this fin work for tomorrow the next day. Get a load of those teeth. Uh, if the rock is soft enough, I'm just going to use the sharpened chainsaw file. Which is what I'm hoping. And if it's not soft enough, oh, no, nope, that's going to work out really nice. Take your sweet you-know-what time. It's called the scratch and blow method for a reason. Scratch the rock. You blow the dust. That's the truth right there. Damn it. Son of a gun. Could be tough, but I think I'm going to rebuild that tooth. Oh! heart attack time I'll be back I gotta get my OptiPhyzer number 10 and get right on top of that see what's going on here okay at first that was a heart attack moment but all it did was there was a piece of bone from here covering that tooth so if you ask me it was a good trade-off because now that tooth is very exposed so Ronald. I'm going to work on these teeth a bit more. I'll show you a close up when I'm done. Okay, besides rebuilding that tooth and maybe a little piece of jaw, which I'm going to have to figure out whether I'm going to do that or not, that's going to be pretty tough. Let's take a closer look at that jaw. Turned out pretty nice, even though it's missing a tooth. Get a load of that. Man, that's bothering me, that missing tooth. Like a little beaver tooth coming up there. Probably the most important tooth there, uh, visualize, visually wise. Anyways, uh, I'm done for the day. Man, that's some tedious stuff there. You bet. But fun. That's too much concentration. I'm calling it quits, finally. I keep saying to call it quits and I keep on working. Uh, Really tough to get to the ends of those uh, those tail phone tail fin bones there, but looking pretty good though. Pretty good. Pretty good.
And there you have it, folks. There's the first half of this video on this fish. Uh, as you can plainly see, lots of ups and downs on this one. Uh, it's amazing how uh, emotional fossil prepping can be for this guy. But anyways, uh, next week comes uh, the second half of this. And hopefully, if I don't forget, in the second half, I will have all the pertinent information for this fossil. Goodbye.